Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we're going to talk about a new profile that Vogue did on Jeff Bezos, the Amazon CEO's, well, he stepped down in 2021, who cares? The Amazon guy's fiance, Lauren Sanchez, because holy shit, right? Like, did she just step in it with him? Like, in the best way. This woman is a fascinating character, and we can have, uh, we have a lot to learn from her in terms of how you snag a very rich and very powerful man. I really wish that this video had come out, or this article had come out a month ago, because it would have been amazing for Evil Week, but whatever, we can be evil all year round. <laughs> Not just a week. God knows I can. How do you get a man like Jeff Bezos? How do you get someone who is a master of his universe? And listen, Jeff is taken. He's the third richest man in the world. There's still quite a few rich men out there to go around. I read this layout of Lauren and I have extrapolated pretty much the things that she did that made her like catnip to someone like Jeff. So if you're looking to land a rich man, which you should be, don't mess with any broke guy ever. What? No, listen up. We've got the blueprint. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys to join the Shalantourage. And besides, it's November where we're saying no, no to things. So that's a big theme over there. We're talking about how to be more selfish. Did I mention the word ruthless? We're also talking a lot about this week, sociopaths and why I am actually making the case to date a sociopath that maybe this is somebody who could be a very good match for you and actually why you should borrow a few of those traits yourself. And I'll tell you exactly how and how to do it and execute it. Plus we're talking about dick pics because I don't know why it's like wiener season. Like I feel like I've gotten, I, I have, I, I have gotten 10 dick pics in the last week. How many have I asked for? Zero. I don't understand this. Why do men do this? Okay, let's talk Mr. and Mrs. Amazon. Actually, I wanted to talk about something Amazon related. Did you guys know? I'm sure you shop at Amazon, I do too. When they have like, say you're looking for humidifiers and it says recommended, like that little banner on the on like one specific one that says recommended. I always thought that meant like, oh, they're highly rated or they're the cheapest. No, that's Amazon's own product. Did you know that? That's like, that's them promoting their own internal product. And of course they like rank it higher. They put it on the top of the search results. And so that sucks because it's pushing out mom and pop businesses that are trying to actually sell on Amazon, which I I did not think that, I didn't know who sold on Amazon. I literally thought it was like Jeff Bezos and stuff he makes in his basement or like Chinese conglomerates. Like I, I didn't know. But then a lot of my friends started selling things on Amazon and they're like, when we get D sort of like ranked in the search results, like, I mean, it kills us, it kills our business. So just keep that in mind that when you see that recommended banner, it is Bezos lying to you. Here's something I also discovered because I went down like a rabbit hole about this. You know the prices are going up for like products because of inflation. So there's this thing called greedflation and this actually creates more inflation. When CEOs and like these companies raise the price, it creates more inflation. And then they get to say, there's inflation, I get to raise a price. It's crazy making. You can tell the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, that you think this is bullshit. So if you look into that, that's your call to action. Just feel like you have some power and beware of what they're listing on Amazon. Okay, so this Vogue article. So Vogue did this whole profile of Lauren Sanchez and by extension, Jeff Bezos, because how the fuck did she get this dude? Or you might be saying, what you might actually be saying is, how did he get her? So when we first met Jeff Bezos, you might have only become aware of him in the last few years. He was like, he was just typical nerd, like Kirkland signature nerd, like bald, sort of penis looking. And that man has gotten daddyfied. Like he is like swole and like confident. And you're like, holy shit. If you look at a picture of him when he was younger, somehow he looks older then than he does now. And a huge part of it is fitness, but a huge part of it, this is banging a hot chick, man. So him and his wife, Mackenzie, got divorced. Okay, so this is what happened. So this was the tea. Lauren and Jeff were rumored to be having an affair at like 2019. And who started that rumor? It was the company I worked for, American Media, AKA the National Enquirer. I didn't work for the Enquirer, I worked for Star, but their sister publications, the same company same boss. And I remember at the time they were going to blackmail Jeff Bezos with his dick pics. 
the richest man on earth who is already bald, okay? If a man is bald and like still so like ballsy, he is not afraid of death. You think he's afraid of his own penis getting out there? And also, I'm sure it's nice. I'm sure it's fine. And in the photo, he's like shirtless in the mirror. It's like a naked wiener selfie. Speaking of dick pics, right? They at at all walks of life they send them. They're like, look what I have. They just can't get, can't get enough of their own. Anyway. He, like, he looked good. Like, his body looked good. And you're like, I would assume that under those pixels, there is a reasonable wiener. I have a reasonable expectation of wiener. So I remember saying, I'm like, you're going to blackmail the richest man on earth. This is your plan? You want to blackmail Batman next? Like, what, where are you going with this? Like, shut up, Lester. I, they, yeah, I may have told this to an attorney general because it's, it did not go well. And also you can't publish a, a nude. You just can't do that. The whole thing was so ridiculous. But it sort of forced into the light the fact that Jeff was maybe cheating, cheating on his wife, Mackenzie, and Lauren was essentially done with her husband, a guy who, okay, so this is how, Lauren Sanchez is like, I don't know what she does in bed. It's probably more like what doesn't she do? You know, good for her. She married a football player, and then she married the head of Endeavor Talent Agency. If you don't know who these people are, I, who cares? They're incredibly high level men. And it's like, she just went like, oh wow, a football player, that's huge. Oh wait, somehow there's someone higher than that. It's the dude who runs like the talent agencies that like the biggest stars in the world are at. How could she ever get higher than that? Bezos. And I'm like, Jesus, girl. So her trajectory, she grew up really poor, had like a grandmother who cleaned houses. They slept in cars. She's a real like American dream origin story. She became a news reporter, became friends with Kris Jenner because she like interviewed her and Bruce when they were opening a gym and really ingratiated herself into the right circles. And then she became a helicopter pilot, first an actual pilot and then a helicopter pilot. And I swear this, this is her like magic. It's the tits, but it's also this helicopter thing because it sets her apart as being so different and so unique. It is proof positive that she is not a gold digger or so these very successful men interpret. Okay. And I think that that is Point number one, point number one. She has her own thing. Does she have her own money in the way these men have it? No, but she clearly has something that they also have, which is drive and consistency. Do you know how driven and consistent you have to be to become a professional football player in the NFL? Or to run a talent agency managing the most neurotic, insane, awful people on the planet? Or to create Amazon? Your average Russian sugar baby isn't going to get that. Yeah, she'll be hot, but Lauren's hot. But the sugar baby's going to be driven only to get your money. Like, that's that's not an external drive. That's not an external motivation. That's no real, like, life skills. That is a lack of understanding the trajectory of a very successful man, which does not actually look like this, right? You talk to any successful person. Oh, what was your rise to fame? Oh, no, it wasn't like that. It was it was all over. It was a fall down, get up again, fall down lower, get back up higher. It is something called grit, grit and resilience. And I believe that these very successful wealthy men fall into one of two categories, the Trumps and the Bezoses, right? And you can, uh, people for whatever reason always come at me in the comments about when I say Melania doesn't really have a life of her own. Does she? What does she do all day? Does she have a business, a charity? What does she do? We don't know, okay? She was like basically an escort who somehow ended up in the White House, which truly seems like a hellscape for her. I, I feel bad for her. But listen, men like Trump, the flaccid, bombastic kind, okay? That's who they're gonna go for. Someone who's not gonna challenge their ego. They always gotta be the top dog in the yard with their chest out like they're gonna peck at bird seed on the ground. That's who they're gonna go for. That's what they want. A true alpha male a Barack, a Bezos. They want someone who can kind of keep up. No, maybe not outpace them because that honestly at that level, like who really can? Some women can, but someone who is going to get it. Someone who is going to understand them. And Jeff had a very, very interesting quote in this. I screenshotted so many. You guys should read this. It's a great, like, it's, it's, a, they seem like the cutest couple in the world. I don't know, am I like in love or something? Because lately I've just been like, 
oh, I'm a sociopath. And I'm like, Travis and Taylor and Lauren and Jeff. <laughs> I'm just like so gooey and squishy over everybody. Oh my God, is this is this what it feels like to have a conscience? Blech, I don't, blech. this is gross. No, thank you. So this is something Bezos had to say about Lauren. And by the way, he's 59 and she's 53. And so I also love that they're age appropriate. You know, like I think with a man at that level, he could be dating a 35 year old and we'd still be like, that's age appropriate, even though it's like a huge actual age difference. But they're like basically the same age. So I love this, I love this. One thing I learned about Lauren is if I'm in a bind, I can throw the gun to her. He said that at her birthday party in a little speech. I can throw the gun to her. What does that mean? It means I trust that woman to get me out of something. I trust her as my partner and as my protector and my defender. I mean, I think that's what it means. Do you have like a different interpretation of that? That's how I choose to interpret it. And if somebody said that to me, that's what I would think. It means he knows she has his back, which brings us to point number two. We are a team. He even says that at some point in this article, like we're a team, like the two of us, we're, you know, we're united. Men at that level, and you know, women at that level too. Your world is very small. Your world can be small. You can't go out and make new friends. You can't go sit at the local bar and have a beer and just chat up like Dennis and Cooley from the local like 512 Plumbers Association and become friends with them. You can't. Your life simply does not operate like that. And when you let new people in, it can be a very scary thing. It's very vulnerable. And so for a guy to feel like, damn, I've got someone on my side. And yeah, okay, your board of directors might be, you have your lawyer who's on your side, you pay all these people. And you pay a woman too, just in a different way. But to feel like I can trust her, she's on this inner circle with me. We were talking a lot, like I said, in the Chalantrage about sociopaths. Jeff Bezos probably is one, like, you know, more or less. Most CEOs, most of these, like, high-powered type of people, male and female, usually are. Not always, but there's a, an overrepresentation for sure. It's a lonely thing. It's a lonely thing when you are incredibly strategic and ruthless and high-earning and high-value. And you have high-minded ideas. You're going to populate the world with, like, methane-free cows. That's literally something he wants to do. You know what that means? Cows that don't... I don't understand. I don't understand how this works. This feels like Jurassic Park. You wanna to go to space. These are lonely things. It's lonely at the top. And so the number one thing you can give a rich man is to make him feel like he's got a teammate in you. That you're not just another person trying to get a piece of him or trying to tell him what to do or trying to wheedle him in some way. It's like, baby, I got you. I'm your teammate here. And I think the misnomer here is well, that just means, what does that mean? I can't ever disagree with him? No, have you ever been on a team? I've played on a lot of teams. I grew up playing hockey. Like we would disagree constantly, but at some point in our disagreement, we would pause and be like, it has to be us against the problem, this other team, this whatever, versus us against each other. And every man I know who is in a successful relationship at a Bezos level or a different one, that is his attitude. It's me and you against the problem, not me and you against each other. We are in fact a team. And when that starts to break down and your partner feels lonely, ooh, that's when cheating becomes very possible because like they're looking, suddenly they're cast out and they have no team. This goes back to our need as humans for tribal and social inclusion. You think someone like Bezos is immune to that? He's probably more susceptible to it than anyone because he understands what it's like not to have one, probably more than most people because he's doing things that most people don't. To find someone who can truly understand his vision, his passion, his drive, who can like not just understand it, but it's like, oh, I've done that too. I also created myself out of nothing. I also created this thing despite all the setbacks and the challenges and the naysayers. That will get your hooks into a man better than your tits. Although if you have tits like Lauren Sanchez, I feel like it really doesn't hurt. Those things are like, talk about rockets. Yeah. The third thing that stood out to me about Lauren Sanchez in this article is how enthusiastic she seemed to be. I mean, Vogue is not a real like jazzy publication. You know, it's not like you're reading like a teen, a teeny bobber magazine. They're very like muted and understated. But the way they were portraying her and her quotes, I mean, she just seems to be like, wow. She even said, she's like, I say the word magical all the time. Isn't this magical? This is magical. Because I'm always looking around our life and like, wow, can you believe we're here? Wow, this is so cool. 
And the writer said that Lauren hugged everyone she came across. She's very warm. And apparently, according to the writer, seven different people that they interviewed described Lauren Sanchez as a force. A force. That means she's magnetic. She has a lot of presence. She has a lot of energy. And again, that enthusiasm. Why is that something that will get your hooks into a rich man? A lot of times being very successful and very rich is very boring. It's very repetitive. Even if they're doing something cool, like they're an athlete and there's, you think, wow, there's a lot of excitement. There is, but at that level, that level of expertise, there's a lot of repetition. You eat the same thing before a game, you play the game, you watch the tapes, you do your same workout, blah, 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 blah. you're in a different city. Same even with like a celebrity like Taylor Swift. You're on a tour bus, you're on a plane, you're doing the concert, you're saying the same thing over and over and over. In most people's life, whether you're a Taylor Swift or a Bezos or whatever, you're going to find a lot of repetition, right? And what do we know about the reason people cheat? To feel alive, to feel alive. What does an enthusiastic person give you? The reason I typically date much younger guys is because they're like puppies. They are so enthusiastic. They, they love everything. They love this chicken. Oh my God, you made this? Damn, they love their vape. They love your tits. They love this Jack Harlow song. They love everything. And I live a pretty exciting life. I don't think of my life as like ultra routine, but it can be, you know, everyone's can. And so to have that like, uh, that infusion of vibrancy, it puts the color back into your life and you become addicted to it. What the fuck do you think drugs do? You ever been on Coke? A lot of vibrancy, everything is enthusiastic. And you do those drugs when you don't have that infusion from a healthier place. So if you can give this to these rich men, wow. Not true, some of them want the like controlling mommy. Absolutely they do, absolutely they do. But if they seem even reasonably healthy, I mean, you're gonna have to figure it out. Try the controlling thing one day and then try the exuberant Lauren Sanchez route and see what they respond more to. I tend to think the exuberance is going is going to work, right? Because a lot of times, like, you know, the Russian sugar baby type, which I feel like is our mortal enemy as women who are trying to land a rich man, you know, if that's what you're trying to do, they can be just very petulant and bitchy and high maintenance. No, I don't like to go over there, Sergey. No, I, don't, I told you I don't like this kind of champagne. Get this light out of my face. I don't like it. What, I'm supposed to walk to parking lot? Bring car through wall. This is how we picture them. They're not exactly rolling with it. Everything's like, this could be better. I don't like this. This caviar, I, who knows where it's from? Finland. Finland, not place. Blech. But when you have someone who is like, wow. It reminds these men how lucky they are. It cultivates gratitude inside of them and they will see you as the portal to that gratitude. They will also see you as the portal to their perfect nine-year-old self, right? When they were wishing to be on a yacht and here you are, you're like, wow, baby, you did this? And they're like, I did do this. <laughs> a very rich man that I was dating recently settled with one of these women. I'm trying not to be mean. Uh, she's the tackiest, low class, uh, but she is enthusiastic. She looks like she eats on the floor. I can just picture her like squatting on the floor, tearing at a rotisserie chicken carcass with her fingers and her teeth. But she's enthusiastic and she infuses his life with a lot of like wonderment. So keep that in mind. Another thing Lauren Sanchez is doing, she is, according to Kim Kardashian, a girl's girl. Lauren and I are always sending DMs building each other up, Kim says. Every time there's a look that we like, she'll say, wow, or OMG, you look amazing. She's such a girl's girl. Why does this, like, why is this good for rich men? Because it shows that she's confident, right? Confident women like other women. You don't have to like every woman. I'm a very confident woman. I am definitely a girl's girl. I don't like every chick. Like what? Because we both have like fallopian tombs. I'm supposed to be your best friend. Get the fuck away from me. But by and large, I am not threatened by other women. You know, I, I love chick. Hello. You guys know I love chicks. 
And that tells a guy, that woman is comfortable in her skin. Shallon knows who she is and she's not threatened. She is judicious about her time and who she lets into her life, but she's not like, mm, she's not mean mugging other girls. She can look at the hottest girl in the room and be like, bitch, you're the hottest girl in this room. And that is going to give a very rich and powerful man peace of mind. Because when you have a confident woman, she's not going to be the, I don't care what Finland is type of Russian sugar baby. That's sort of like a Russian crystal. Net, You know, sort of shades of that. She is going to be much more amenable to, let's say, you being the boss and you being in charge. She's gonna roll with things. She's not gonna give you a headache because men at that level, they've got enough headaches. They're everywhere. They're getting sued by the Federal Trade Commission. They don't need a headache in their bedroom, in their Murcielago, on their yacht. They want something peaceful. If they're healthy, if they're toxic, a whole different story. We're assuming that these guys you're going after are healthy people, who are good people, and who may just haven't found the right woman yet. Next thing she does, according to Jeff. Lauren has amazing intuition, almost witchy powers in that regard. She sees things that other people don't see. She's really very sensitive to other people and what they're thinking. Uh, she sounds super strategic and Machiavellian, which I love. Also, Jeff Bezos might be kind of on the spectrum, so he might like, a lot of really powerful people are. I mean, so he might be very unaccustomed to understanding what other people are thinking. Like, I can't read your emotion. Like, what is, what is it that you want? Even if he's not on the spectrum, he might just be operating at such a high level and be so powerful, he doesn't give a fuck what people are thinking. And so for her to be like, hey, like, here's how maybe you could get something better out of the situation. Let's hone in on what this person needs and how they're feeling. Can you see they're feeling angry? anxious, blah, 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 she could really be helping him get softer or at least giving him some insight into humans and situations that he on his own can't do. And that's not really like a position you can hire. Like chief intuition officer, sounds like something that we work douchebag would hire, right? Weird ass wife. So I think for him to see her as very similar to him and that she's driven, she came from nothing, she's you know, she picks herself back up. She's got a lot of grit. That, all these amazing similarities. But then here's how she's different. She's childlike and exuberant. And she's sensitive and emotional. Wow. So what have we seen demonstrated here? <gasps> Dark feminine and light feminine. You guys, you guys. If you guys missed Evil Week this year and my whole course on light and dark feminine energy and how to weaponize it, how to Lauren Sanchez yourself and get a Bezos, it's in the Chalantourage. You can still, you can actually buy it if even if you don't wanna join the Chalantourage, but, but if you do decide to join, you're gonna have a whole bunch of new best friends. We have seven over 700 girls just talking and chatting. We've got a million group chats, but yes, you will get access to Evil Week, which is my whole course on how to do this. So if you like this video and you're like, ooh, I kinda wanna know more about this, this year's Evil Week will tell you exactly how to get deeper into this and just pop in and out of this instantly. You will turn yourself into a seductive weapon, like hands down. Last but not least, last but not least, here's something Lauren Sanchez said and why I think this was closing the trap around Jeff Bezos. So Lauren is talking about a college professor she had at a community college when she was 19. Quote, she literally changed the trajectory of my life, said Sanchez, tearing up again. By the way, I never used to cry. This is him, Bezos. I blame you. I made her vulnerable and soft, says Bezos, with more than a hint of pride. I made her vulnerable and soft. I made her into a woman. I am a man. I unlocked her womanhood. She never used to give this to anyone else. She was so tough and spiky, but my love, not just my love, my protective masculine energy allowed herself to become the woman she was always meant to be. Because I am such a man. I have allowed her to be a woman. Lauren, I'm at your feet. I'm just at your feet. Fucking incredible. Incredible. I want you to learn this for yourself. This is an amazing thing to do. 
credit your best side, your feminine side, your light feminine side, side, credit it to the man. I just never felt like I could be vulnerable with anyone. <laughs> and girl, hopefully that's true. I, I mean, this whole video, it's not about like lie and make all this up, but play this up. If this is true, amplify that. Let him know that. Let him know that. Imagine if the roles were reversed. What do you want to hear a man say? I never thought I could be a billionaire until I met you. Until I thought, damn, I've got that woman in my corner, my queen. I can do anything. I can colonize life on Jupiter, which seems to be what Jeff Bezos wants to do, I don't understand. But like, wow, I'm so proud of myself. My, my talents and my love has made such a difference. Don't we all wanna think we're making an impact on the person we care about? Give that to him. Let him know that that is the case. And again, it should be true. If it's not true, don't, don't say it. And don't even date this person. If he is truly not making you better, why are you with him? I was talking to a boy uh, a little while ago and he's like, what are you looking for in someone? And I had asked him, what are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking, I, I like teams. I wanna be part of a team. I wanna build something with someone. And he is a very successful person. He's not like, I wanna open up a hot dog stand by the side of the road. Like he wants to like, I don't know, open a wing in a hospital. And he asked me what I was looking for. And I'm like, I'm looking to not be the smartest person in the room. I am looking for someone who is going to make me better and who can help impact my life and make me smarter and stronger, and, you know, and therefore I'm, I'm looking for someone who will let me help do that for them, that we can both be the wind beneath each other's wings. And we were essentially saying the same thing. We were looking for a teammate. Let's see how this goes. But listen, that is what we should be looking for. And it sounds like Jeff Bezos was. And more successful men are looking for that than you might think. The ones who just want the Russian sugar babies, you can spot them a mile away. Small hands, smell like cabbage. The ones who truly want another alpha female, if you sharpen your vision, you can smell them a mile away too. And honey, they're looking for you just as much as you're out there looking for them. So let me know what you think about this. Have you dated super rich and successful men? How did you do it? What was your what was your method? Did you agree with like Lauren Sanchez's methods that I've kind of highlighted here? Or are you like, I think that's wrong, or I think that's right, or I would add on to it? Let me know what you think. Also, like I said, join the Chalantourage. Come and make some friends. It's the holidays, it's a it could be a weird, lonely time, and sometimes you just need to rant about your family. And in a way, it's easier if people don't actually know you. You know, if it's there's a little bit of neutrality versus if it's your best friends or your cousin or something, we got you. Whatever you need, girl, we got you. Come on down. All right, alligators, I will see you later.